Becoming a permanent secretary is a dream of every civil servant in the civil service. This August gathering are here to witness the swearing-in of four new permanent secretaries appointed by Governor Abdullah Soli. The governor gallantly steps into the hall and exchanges pleasantries with the dignitaries already seated. The secretary to the government of the state formally announced the commencement of the inauguration ceremony. The four permanent secretary appointees are made to step forward to take their oath of office and allegiance, respectively. After officially inaugurating the appointees, the governor admonished them to be accountable, prudent and fair in the discharge of their duties. For him, the appointment of the permanent secretaries would further strengthen the effectiveness of the state civil service. Deputy Diaz, congratulate you, our new permanent secretaries, on your well-deserved appointment as you settle down in the ministries, departments and agencies that you will be posted to. I charge you to make valuable contributions in our collective effort to realize the vision of this administration as the accounting officers of your various ministries, I call on you to acquaint yourself with the Financial Regulation and the Public Procurement Act in carrying out government business. Luckily for you, the DG of BPP is sitting right here next to you and is looking at you in case you will be ready. This is in line with the principle of transparency, accountability, and prudence in the management of public resources which this administration has imbibed in some of its core values. The welfare of workers in the state would continue to be a priority to the Abdullah Suley's led administration. This informs the financial implementation of the 11 years old backlog of civil servant promotion arrears. This is why, even with the constraint of funds, government implemented the backlog of promotion of civil servants in the state. <laughs> And I'm sure that some civil servants, including the NLC chairman, have already received their alert for the promotion that we had given. I assure you that government will continue to accord the welfare of this, of this workforce the needed priority in order to galvanize the public service for efficiency and effectiveness in the delivery of service. But to whom much is given, much is also desired. It is my expectation that our public servants will reciprocate the gesture of government with improved productivity in our state. Amid cheers from the mammoth crowd at the ceremony, the new permanent secretaries signed the register and stepped forward to receive the appointment letters. They pledged their allegiance to the state government and are sure of their commitment to strengthen the civil service. I hereby express our profound gratitude to Almighty God for this official day. And Your Excellency, the Governor of National State, for finding the quality of this appointment, National State Civil Service. Sir, we are very much aware of your passion and zeal to the Governor State and move it to earlier heights. This can be attested by your pedigree and people-oriented programs and projects aimed at bringing support to the entire populace, populace of the state as I calculated in your policy documents for the purpose of exceeding all expectations. In tandem with the foregoing, we wish to end the equivocal, unequivocal, assure you of our total commitment and 100% loyalty to the effective and efficient implementation of your policies and programs for the people of Nassau State. The new permanent secretaries 
will be saddled with the huge tax of overseeing the day-to-day -day runnings of the various ministries, especially now that the government is here to appoint new crops of commissioners. It's a personal parade of the 2021 Youth Peace Camp in the local government of Nasara State. Over 14 communities across the state have been engaged in this week-long training organized by Action Aid and Global Peace Development Initiative. One after the other, the 500 youth beneficiaries take steps in a march pass to celebrate their graduation. <laughs> Statistics from a reputable journal indicate that youth form a greater percent of violent extremism perpetrators and victims across the globe. The Action Aid and Global Peace are not oblivious of these glaring facts. This has informed its decision to train these youths on capacity building, social interaction, and to offer them psychosocial support. Skills. We have youths who have learned um, how to produce shoes, some have learned about makeup, some have learned how to produce rugs, some have learned life skills, some have learned about uh, self confidence and capacity building, and sorts of skills like that. Yeah. The aim is to inculcate the culture of peace in them and enhance their capacity to mitigate conflicts in their various communities and make them to be self-reliant. The vulnerable people, poverty has no tribe. Poverty has no gender. Poverty has no religion. And so there are so many things that we are contending with in Nigeria. The of the 2021 is calm, is a great a culture of peace among youth, ensuring their social bonding, ensuring that youth have the capacity to mitigate conflict in their communities, build the capacity on various skills for employment, opportunity, with craft and skills that can generate income for them become financially independent, and most importantly, to contribute to societal development, mitigating all forms of violence in their communities and within the state. The training of 500 youths on peace building is a boost to the efforts of the national state government in curbing violent extremism in the state. Yes, uh, this is three years count now that uh, we partnered with uh, Action Aid to train our young persons to avoid all sorts of violence and extreme uh, violence extremism in the state as a way forward to bring in development and have a peaceful national state. The training has better equipped the participants to mitigate conflicts in their various communities. It has also helped them to be self reliant. Since I came, it was a very nice experience. Uh, I have learned on personal development and I have learned on how to depend not only on the government but to, to also build myself through acquiring skills, personal skills. And I've learned so far some of the personal skills I've acquired here. I've acquired shoemaking and the rest. As a young person, you need to have something doing. You need to learn handwork. We should not depend on the government or we should not depend on our knowledge or our academic skills, but we need to have our own uh, skills, our position that we empower our life, that we that will help us to build the future. With the team of the Peace Camp, shaping peace through harmonious cohabitation, it is our great expectation that communities in Nasara State would experience more peace. This suspected fake military officer is from Kwampan local government of Plateau State. His parents reside in the village, but financial challenges in his family forced him to drop out of school when he was in GSS2. The suspect's uncle is a military officer in Bronu State, and he allegedly sold his uncle's camouflage and relocated to Jaws to kickstart his nefarious activities. In order to solidify his operations, he allegedly stole an AK-49 rifle and two magazines from a Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps officer in Jaws. He then moved to Nassau State to begin his illicit activities in Cairo and Lafayette towns. But an end to his life of crime came when the suspect was intercepted by the Nigeria police while driving along BAD Road in Lafia. A black Toyota Corolla vehicle, the military camouflage, an AK-49 rifle was found in his possession. Preliminary investigation revealed that the suspect who parades himself as military officer 
in camouflage, was never enlisted into the army, but got the uniform from his uncle, who is a military personnel serving in Banu State. He thereafter moved to Jaws, Plateau State, under the guise of being a military personnel and went away with the AK-49 AK rifle and two magazines of a Nigerian security and civil defense personnel serving in Jaws. When the rifle was left in his custody by the NCDC officer who went to do his registration to obtain national identity card. Furthermore, the suspect came down to Nasara State and started perpetrating his nefarious activities in Karo and Lafia before Nemesis caught up with him. This was at the moment of the uh, they went to the In continuation of its offensive against railway vendors, operatives of the Nigerian police anti-kidnapping unit arrested a company driver and saw other persons conveying the rail tracks. The suspects were conveying the rail tracks in two container body truck from Nasara to Kano State. Chiefs of the anti-kidnapping unit, led by CSP and Nate Ayo, while working on incredible intelligence, intercepted a truck with that number plate along Lafayette Makodi Road on 25th August 2021 at about 23:20 hours. The said truck was conveying vandalized street tr trucks stuck in two container bodies. Consequently, the trial of Frederick Nege, Gafar Sharif, and Abdullah Dolapo, all base were arrested in connection to the crime. The suspects confessed to the crime and are pleading with the government to temper justice with mercy. Uh, I stole the elephant from. I, I stole the elephant from 70 Memalari Barak Bruno Street. So when I stole the elephant, I I ran away to. Uh, to jazz. This is the first time where I hold this thing for my hand. I didn't hold it for my life, so I just have uh, favor and favor and, and mercy. If I don't know, say this one, I won't come carry. I don't know him. We all are young before. I hope for some reason. I come to know nobody's going to send me. I think I have a job. I have to find. I'm going to here. The parade, which is the first outing of the new commissioner, featured the arrest of suspects, including 16 kidnappers, 18 courties, and 13 umbrellas. The National State Government has signed a joint venture agreement with ABS Blueprint Limited for the development of a technology village at Asopada in Kara local government of the state. The Asopada land, which is situated on a 67 hectares of land, would also have a technology hub. The project, when completed, is expected to train over 2,000 students as software engineers and create 15,000 direct employment and 60,000 indirect employment. The technology village would also include a commercial center, schools, hospitals, and religious centers. The project, which is expected to go up to 2 billion naira, would be funded by ABS Consortium. So, the proposed Nasara Technology Village is situated on 67 hectares of land in the local government area. Nasara State. This project will have a technology hub at the core of it. This technology hub will be operated by the Decagon Learning Institute. It will provide fully funded training for up to 2,000 students and IT enthusiasts each year. Decagon will secure outsourced jobs for the graduates upon completion of the program and becoming certified software engineers. We will have an innovative high-rise housing which comprises of blocks of one and two bedroom flats on 10 hectares of the land which will be funded by the family homes funds. We will also have two bedroom, two bedroom bungalows and three bedroom bungalows making a cumulative total of 1,000 uh, 1,500 housing units. The Nasara Technology Village will include a commercial center, schools, a hospital, and religious centers. We will also build the infrastructure and required auxiliary services in the entire project. The Nasara Technology Village will create 15,000 direct jobs and 60,000 indirect jobs. It will inject a total investment of 22 billion naira into Nasara State. Now, coming from Nasara State, where we are not used to seeing some of these kind of things. 
So there are a lot of people that are still suspicious. Is it true over 20 billion will be spent and not a penny is going to come from Nasrawa State? Some people will be scratching their head. Is it a reality? Is it just a gimmick? Is it that you will hear all these kind of questions? The only way you can nail these kind of people is for you to begin these structures immediately, to engage employment of people immediately, and to start it immediately, then they will be quiet. And that will be the beginning of it. <laughs> Most of these things, Silicon Valley was not built overnight. It took over 20 years to build Silicon Valley. We don't have 20 years to spend here. For that reason, it must start small. You know, go and start the whole process. Let people see the employment opportunities that you are bringing. Let people see the funding. As the 2023 elections draws near, stakeholders have started canvassing support for candidates they believe have the capacity. One of such is the Progressive Consolidation Group, a coalition of the All Progressive Congress. Today, they are visiting Governor Abdullah Soleil at the government house in Lafayette. They want the governor to support the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, for president at the 2023 presidential election. The field of Vice President has the wherewithal to continue and consolidate on the policies of President Muhammad Buhari. As a professional lawyer, we know the various contributions he has made in the area of law, jurisprudence, and its actual in its actualization in so many fields in Nigeria. The rule of law would really get a booster under his leadership. His foresight in so many areas will be useful for Nigeria as a detribalized person, as a man who is detached, so to say, from the shallow thinking of many of us who are tribal by goods. I believe and we believe all here that here we have a professional gentleman whose thinking from A to Z is simply that of Nigeria and Nigeria alone. The Nasrallah State Governor is not in disbelief of the capacity of the Vice President to run for the presidency. The man I came to know, coincidentally, I was the managing director of African Petroleum, and he was the Attorney General of Lagos State. <clears throat> and because of that relationship, the gentleman has visited Nasarawa State I think more number of times since I became a governor than he visited in his first four years in office. And when we build our major project, the diagnostic center, we've, we believe the right person actually to come and commission that was he himself. And he came and commissioned that and he spoke gallantly about Nasarawa State. <laughs> So he's a man that I have come to respect, I've come to know very well, and we had the opportunity, you know, of having a gentleman, you know, that is a totally party man, loyal person to Mr. President. And I believe you are also selling him earlier than he's selling himself, <laughs> which is the way you're supposed to be. The group also reached out to members of the National State House of Assembly, seeking that they join in supporting the Vice President candidature. Centrally, in order to promote his course, not because he has sent us, but because we have seen in him the kind of political personality that will be good enough for the continuity of APC in Nigeria, for the continuity of the good values that have been set by APC and especially by the President. The group also visited the Lafayette American Council to receive royal blessings for their candidates. Welcome to our interview segment. The local government election is fast approaching. And of course, today we have with us the chairman of the National State Independent Electoral Commission, Ayuba Awande, to give us updates on the level of preparation for the forthcoming local government election. 
Chairman, we're happy to have you once again on our program. Thank you very much. All right, uh, let's get started. Um, about a month ago, we, there was a list in circulation on the number of successful candidates and those who were disqualified. Tell us, what were the criteria for this, uh, this disqualification and the qualification of the candidates? Uh, I think I, I have to make something very serious. The Nostra State Electoral Commission did not, uh, did not disqualify anybody. If you check that list very well, you see that uh, almost everybody on that list is cleared. And uh, uh, the only ones that were not cleared had, uh, had as remarked to their names as uh, particulars not submitted. But we had those that uh, did not purchase uh, the NASEC uh, nomination forms and uh, did not submit any particulars to NASEC. That, uh, that has to do with uh, themselves. Uh, the, the beyond their names that uh, we have from, uh, from their political parties, we do not have their credentials and uh, other, other things that uh, were critical to their nomination. And uh, that is why we just know particulars are not submitted. And uh, since we do not have their particulars, uh, they will not be on our ballot. Uh, all right, so your commission is saddled to the responsibility of uh, supervising primary election of political parties. Uh, what were your observations? Uh, you know, ours is just to observe. Uh, I've been asked this question severally, but the fact still remains that uh, primary elections are internal, internal issues of, uh, of the various political parties. Uh, but from, from our observation, I think uh, I will rate the political parties at uh, 60. Uh, we had those that did not even conduct uh, any, any primaries at all, while uh, those that, uh, that uh, conducted the primaries uh, did not uh, fully follow their laid down rules. That's why I said that from our observation, will read the political parties at 60%, uh, uh, which I feel that uh, it's very good. All right, uh, Chairman, you have been turning around some, some local governments across the states uh, to meet with some traditional uh, leaders and other stakeholders. What do you hope to achieve with this talk? Uh, local government councils are the closest government to the people, and uh, traditional rulers are also the closest leaders uh, to the people because uh, they live within our communities. And uh, we have been going around uh, socialization, uh, basically to, to mobilize the people to come out on the 6th of October for this, for this election, to exercise their franchise, because uh, it is their right. And uh, also to, to sensitize them on the modalities uh, we're going to be adopting for these elections. Uh, is this issue of uh, the newly created uh, polling units uh, by INEC and uh, we had to sensitize the people that uh, uh, we are not going to be using the new polling units because uh, they do not have voters register, the voters register in place. Uh, we will be using the old polling units, that is the 1,495 polling units we used to have uh, because uh, by law we are supposed to collect the voters register from uh, INEC and uh, that is what we got. We got only, we could only access the voters register for the 1,495 old units we have in the state. And uh, I think uh, our sensitization was very good because everywhere we went we were well, we were well received and uh, we, we appreciated the questions and uh, clarifications that uh, the people sought get from us and I think we did justice to their questions and for us it was a very good exercise. All right, the election is just some few weeks away. Uh, how prepared is the commission in terms of logistics and other materials that would ensure a each free uh, local government polls in the state? Uh, if you remember the commission had to postpone the election. Uh, the election was, was uh, initially supposed to go on the 27th of February. And uh, we had to postpone the elections because uh, of uh, some administrative and uh, logistics reasons. Uh, we had tackled all those issues 
before uh, coming out to, to fix this date, and uh, I think uh, we are presently good. To uh, all right, I will ask you this question once again. A lot of persons do not believe in local government elections, not just in national states, but in Nigeria. Looking at the trends of most local government elections across the country, how assuring are your words to the people of the state in order for them to participate in this forthcoming local government polls? Uh, that is the gospel that uh, we have gone around to preach uh, in all the lo local governments we have gone to. We took our time to draw all the data local governments across the state. And uh, we have also engaged uh, various uh, political party parties to to assure them that uh, what NASEC is going to do is to conduct this election according to all the laws governing the conduct of uh, these elections. And uh, we are also going to ensure that uh, voting materials get to all polling units across the state. And uh, we are also going to declare the results as they come from the field. And uh, that is what we have consistently said, and uh, that is what we are going to do. All right, thank you very much, Barrister Ayuba Wande, Chairman National State's Independent Electoral Commission. You have always been a good talker. Each time you come knocking on your door, you don't fail to do justice to our question. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you very much.